Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we are joined by Tanmay Gopal, who is the co-founder and CEO of Hasura. Hasura provides GraphQL data APIs, fostering productivity for developer teams and API consumers. Tanmay joins us today to tell us more about Hasura and what the company offers. Thank you for coming along, Tanmay, and welcome to the jam. Thanks for having me, Zach, uh, and great to be here. So for a business that hasn't worked with Hasura before, what are your key products and offerings? Yep. Um, so when, as, as, as a business that you're kind of building an application or you're building a service, you're typically going to have data um, and um, that data needs to be accessed over APIs that will be used by you know, products and services that your developers are building, right? So you're building developer experiences or digital experiences on mobile apps or web apps, or you're building microservices. And these things are going to be accessing uh, the data that you have. Now, typically when this data access happens, you build an API to make it easy for these uh, products and microservices to access that data and Hasura automates that process. So instead of you spending uh, you know, years, months, depending on the size of the data that you have to build out those APIs, Hasura is kind of really changing that into minutes and days, but it's an automated process um, and the developers who are building these services and products can get onto the business of building those applications quickly. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what our core uh, mm -hmm. product does. Uh, we're an open source product so because we're part of the critical path as well. So we're an open source um, Apache license project and we have a managed service and an enterprise product uh, that is uh, you know, adds certain support for commercial data sources, adds support for certain enterprise features that are becoming important in production and high compliance environments um, that we also offer. Uh, but across these three kind of product lines, the core kind of value prop is essentially automating that data API process. Awesome. And what are the most recent improvements or innovations in your offerings? Yep. So I think very recently we announced support for Snowflake, um, which is going to be amazing. Just given the amount of the increasing traction that Snowflake is getting in the in the ecosystem, uh, the increasing amount of uh, use that we're putting to Snowflake, right? Like we're, we're we're putting all kinds of data inside Snowflake. We're using it in all kinds of ways. And uh, and we're kind of you know we're kind of in this new reality where now you're not you don't have just individuals or applications accessing Snowflake, but your internal Snowflake data might be required by multiple teams and multiple services and multiple applications, and not just the one. And as soon as that happens, that's kind of when you're like, hey, I need an API for my Snowflake data. I don't want to expose Snowflake directly to these end consumers. Um, and Hasura kind of comes in there. So our support for Snowflake allows you to automate that data API process for Snowflake. Um, and that means that you can instantly start sharing your Snowflake data over an API with multiple applications and services. Awesome. And what are the most uh, present issues in the data market today? Yep, that's a great question. I think a variety of um, variety of problems, right? So if you think about the 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 big shift that's happened over the last few years, it's essentially that we've suddenly realized that we can actually store um, and process a lot of data. And, and our ability to capture data has improved too, right? Um, from internal, external sources, whatever. So that has kind of led to this massive explosion uh, in the amount of data that we have, that we can capture, and that we can put to use, right? And that's resulted in a lot of innovation in kind of the data ecosystem. So you have a tremendous amount of fragmentation. You have highly specialized data sources, highly specialized databases. Um, but what happens when you have that much data and then you can kind of put that to so much use is that actually shipping value, right? De taking the value that, you've, that you're creating on that data and deploying that value becomes very challenging, right? We, uh, as soon as you have a large amount of data that comes from different places, you have issues around um, compliance, authorization, governance, right? And you, you, you know that you've kind of created this insight on that data, but now when you want to deliver that insight, are you doing that in a way that's secure? Are you doing that in a way that's compliant? Are you making sure that the end application that's kind of using this data is kind of using the right slice of data, right? And you're not kind of exposing all of your data to users and customers and end users who shouldn't have access to it, right? Um, and, and that kind of becomes a challenge. The, the second piece of this is inherent to kind of the activity of this, as soon as the amount of data exploded, as soon as the amount of insights that you're deriving from that data exploded, um, the amount of time that you're spending building that API layer 
that is providing, for example, some of that security and governance and um, authorization. On top of these models, the amount of time that we have to spend now increases as well, right? We suddenly went from a world where, yeah, we have 20, 20 tables inside a database that describe my application, right? Now, single application is getting data from these 20 tables, but also getting data from other SaaS services, also getting data from a search service and other database, also getting data from an OLAP system, right? You have data coming in from so many places that you want to kind of integrate and build inside um, your application, right? And as soon as that happens, the number of APIs that you need to build increases too. Um, so that's like another, that's kind of another big challenge that, that, that people are confronted with when they're dealing with multiple sources. The last piece is uh, the amount of expertise that's now required to do the plumbing, right? So you have more data sources and more types of data sources, and you have all of these people that want to access that data. So now as you kind of start building out solutions, right, that allow for that data access to happen securely, you know, a, a, a nice way to consume that data over an API, right? Even after you've done that, you kind of now run into the challenge of the amount of expertise that's required in making sure that you're querying these different data sources accurately, right? The way that you would munch data that is, you know, partly in Salesforce and partly in your own database is very different from the way that you might munch data that is within the same database or a database that's, you know, Postgres and SQL Server or BigQuery and um, Postgres, right? Like the way that you create query plans for fetching that data, securing that data and munging that data together um, is different and the optimizations are different. And so that means that, you know, it's another sink of kind of expertise and time in work that's not necessarily adding value to the business, right? So those are kind of the big challenges that we have with uh, just the exploding amount of data in the ecosystem, right? apart from all the other stuff that you have to do for running data and whatnot. So when you we specifically think about data access. And off the back of that, uh, what does that mean for Hasura's product development teams? What kind of trends are you focused on next? Yeah, no, I think for us, those, those, those three things matter the most, right? So the, the way that you're able to kind of design your API that works across multiple data sources and plan the way data fetching and data operations are going to work across multiple sources, the way we think about performance optimization, um, and third, the way that we think about security and authorization, right? Those are the three pillars of our um, of the product and of the work that we do, right? So every time we, like all of our work is geared around basically these three pillars, right? Adding support for more databases, making sure that the API is extending and is flexible across them, making sure that we're as performant as possible, and we are able to leverage the underlying data source or the database's property, right? So we'll be using a time series database. The way that we use that database is different from the way that we'd use a normal transactional database, right? Because um, you can use the properties of that database really well um, in the way that you operate on that data and the way that we expose the API on that data. And then third, of course, security and authorization. So solving kind of these core problems that people are doing today by hand are essentially the three pillars of our product development. Fantastic. And what kind of infrastructural resources do you have in the Asia Pacific market? Um, in the APAC market, we so are about forty percent of the team is in um, in the US, where our HQ is. About forty percent is in um, Asia and APAC, and twenty percent is uh, EMEA, uh, South America, etc. And um, so that's kind of how the team is split. Um, we see. From our from our internal team itself, there's a tremendous amount of uh, community that we have in the APAC region. Um, we have lots of customers in the APAC region as well, both uh, on on kind of both ends of the spectrum, right? Independent developers, people building side projects, to kind of like uh, some of the largest banks in APAC, uh, and uh, Hasura and production. And um, so we see a fair amount of customer footprint, a fair community footprint, and of course, a part of our team is uh, in APAC as well. And if an enterprise end user wanted to get in touch with Hasura, what is the best way to do that? Oh, just head on to hasura.io and uh, you know uh, read up a little bit about kind of uh, Hasura. And if you have any questions, there's a uh, uh, there should be a way to contact uh, the right folks in the team and reach out to them. Uh, and of course, I'm always up for a conversation about data APIs and your data strategy and how you're thinking about GraphQL and things like that. So, you know, feel free to hit me up on Twitter and LinkedIn where I hang out. Awesome. Well, thank you, Tanmai. It's been awesome hearing more about Hasura and the exciting products you offer. Thank you so much for joining us on The Jam and we look forward to hearing more from Hasura in the future.